Revelation 12:17, and the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. This has been really uh, a team effort. You got 50 uh, different conservative organizations have contributed to this. Um, that's what makes this a, a, a strong product. No presidential campaign or president uh, is going to be able to ignore it. Ladies and gentlemen, with your help and God's grace, the great revival of America begins on November 5th, 2024. In a bill requiring every American to attend a church of their choice on Sunday to see if we can get back to But you really, you weren't allowed to use that power and you're now allowed to use it. I get in there, you're going to be using that power at a level that you've never used it before. It's going to bring back the churchgoer. I mean, you have to see. I don't like the charts when I see charts where they're going in the wrong direction. We don't like that. We're going to bring it back and I really believe it's the biggest thing missing from this country. It's the biggest thing missing. We have to bring back our religion. We have to bring back Christianity in this country. There's a pretty wild thing happening in America today. In 2000, 70% of Americans belong to a religious institution, but today that number is 50%. This has been a pretty precipitous decline in the um, ability or willingness of Americans to you know, go to church or to a religious institution on a regular basis. And I think that has lots of broad impacts in our society. Um, but there are a lot of reasons for that. But one of them is that Americans just have less free time. Um, when you have to work 70 hours to get the same standard of living for your family that 40 hours would have gotten you a few decades ago, you don't have time to go to Wednesday night Bible study. You might not have the ability to even attend church or services on a Sunday. Um, you can talk about church if you want or if you don't want, but um, it, it is just true that some of the the leisure time activities, some of the institutions that Americans found value and meaning in are less accessible when you have to work these long hours. I'd love to just hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, one of the biggest, it's one of the things we talked about with the 32 hour work week when we put that in our contract talks was the fact that we wanted to create work-life balance. And, and as I say, when you're working multiple jobs to live paycheck to paycheck, or you're working seven days a week, 12 hours a day, something's, something else is sacrificed in that. And, and, uh, uh, and that's it's what ends up happening. You, 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 you have to sacrifice, you know, uh, ability to go to church. If it's something else to do on a Sunday, maybe you get a Sunday off and you haven't slept all week and you spend the whole day sleeping. I mean, that, that is a reality a lot of workers face um, on, on some of the schedules they work. Um, and I do believe Congress has an obligation here in spending priorities and regulations. And, and that may be an ugly word to some people that represent business. But uh, listen, I agree with you. I think we, we should have a, an interest in leisure time, right? We should have an interest in making sure that people are able to find value outside of work. A lot of people find value in work, and I'm glad that they do. But a lot of people find more value by the institutions and the social clubs and the churches that they affiliate and spend time with outside of work. But that is just less accessible for people today. And that should be a, a public policy interest of the United States Congress. And I appreciate the, this, this hearing allowing us to talk about that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The two-horned beast appears in two faces with gentleness of a lamb and fairness of the dragon. This had to be some extent already been shown in the inconsistent of sending forth to the world doctrine of equality of all men in respect to natural rights, the right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and uphold by law all the evils of American slavery. Also, by professing to grant privilege to all to worship God according to the dictates of their own concerns. Then, persecuting Baptists and Quakers for following their cautious conviction. But this huh, will be shown more fully in the future when Congress, which is now being called, 
shall be called upon to make laws concerning religion. May the Lord have mercy on us and let us abide in him. Our friends, if they hate you, they first hated Christ.